Here's our prompt. Download a cute photo of a cat. All right, all right, so it's going to Google Images, y'all. Oh, this is so cool. All right, go ahead and search something. I need a cat, come on. Let's go, Claude. Okay, there we go. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm doing nothing. My hands are here. I'm doing nothing. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, okay. Is there gonna be a pop-up here or is it actually gonna get this? Is it gonna get it? Come on, y'all. Hit download. Oh, well, yes, we got it. We got it, we got it. I thought we got paid walled. We have our cat. There it is, y'all. AI can now control our computer. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up this new artificial intelligence from Claude so it starts working on your computer. To best showcase this technology, we're gonna be using Docker along with Zapier to show you a really cool use case. As you probably already saw in that very intro of this video, this stuff is pretty cool, y'all. So this thing can take complete control of our computer. But because this is so early days, they have advised us to put this in a virtual machine. And what that basically means is that obviously you have your laptop or desktop, but we're gonna use a virtual machine. So if anything, goes crazy, <laughs> like the AI turns on us, then we are not going to have issues with like losing privacy information, like anything on our laptop because it's in a virtual machine. I'll make sure to link the documentation down below. And today's video is sponsored by Zapier. Zapier has contacted me and they're just like, let's make a bunch of cool videos together. So you're going to see more content around these topics. Let's go and jump into today's video on how we set up this computer API or they call it computer use beta. Step number one, download Docker. The reason for Docker is that this is gonna allow us to run this in a virtual machine. It costs no money. You don't have to make an account. You just sign in, as you'll see here. We're gonna be doing some fun examples together, but I wanted to do one major use case to see if it's able to fill out a form. So we're gonna be using Zapier interfaces here. Now think about it. This is just to graze the imagination. In context, this could be filling out a lead form. This could be scraping data online, which I'll probably dive more into later on. But let's just see if this tech can even fill out a form. It's a dog form. Once you've installed Docker, you're gonna be able to launch the application. If you just launched it, you can just say continue as guest if you don't want to make an account yet. Therefore, part one is done. We will create a VM here or basically give AI the ability to act like it's on a computer and do computer stuff. I'll make sure to leave a Google Doc with the instructions down below of the steps I do in today's video or alternatively just provide you with bumpups.com, which can just read the video and give you the steps outlined in text format. The next thing you need to do is make sure you go to Google, type in Anthropic API. Once you've logged in and set up your account, go to get API keys. Two major things you should know. First major thing, for you to do this, you're gonna need to set up your billing. I think when you create an Anthropic account, you get like $5 of free credits. So that's super cool. Second major thing is that this is where the API keys are located. But all you really need to do is simply hit create key. Once you hit create key, put in a name that you're going to be able to recognize and then select your workspace. Hit add. Once you've done that, copy that, put in your notes, just have it for later reference. I'll make sure to put all the commands I use today in the description down below, but let's get this VM started here. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and use the documentation provided by Anthropic here. I'm going to scroll down and go to computer use reference implementation. Click this. Don't worry, you don't have to understand everything that's shown here, but all you need to know is that basically this is the code that's going to allow us to run this. Okay, so with this though, we're gonna need to put this in a VM. I'm gonna take a step back as if you've never coded or never even seen a terminal command before. Let's make sure you can even do the steps and the actions I'm about to do right now. So first off, just see if you have Git installed. And what Git is, is just it's connection to GitHub as you just saw there. If you don't see that, you don't have it installed. Therefore, make sure you install Homebrew first. And this is gonna allow you to basically do these kind of commands that you're about to see later on in this video. That line right there. I'll of course try to remember to put in the description. Once you do that, you're gonna do brew install Git hit enter and then all you need to do to confirm that you have git is do git version if you see that you're good to go oh and also this is just a terminal window so on mac or windows or linux just type in terminal and this will pop up with all that out of the way step one we're going to clone that git we're going to take the code i'm going to paste this line i get this message just because of the fact that i was already playing around with it but you'll get a message that makes it a clone within the directory next thing we want to actually navigate within this github directory to the specific part that's going to allow us to run this vm we're going to do cd anthropic quick starts and then within quick starts, this is where we want to go to. We want to go to the computer use demo. So we'll do CD computer use demo, and then we're in the right area. So what you should see on your terminal is whatever you're using. So for me, it's coffee fuel and then computer use demo. And just to make this a little bit more simpler, all we're doing is simply going into a folder in a folder and being like, hey, this is the code that I can run to get the AI to do stuff on my computer, which they plainly call it a computer use demo. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna load in the variables we want associated, such as our API key and how we're gonna run this locally on our machine or just basically run this on our laptop. We're gonna to do touch.env. This is gonna create a file called env. This is where we're gonna store a key. So I'm gonna paste this here, but go ahead and just copy it from the description from this video. You're gonna do two things, Anthropic API key, then your Anthropic API key, the one that we just got earlier in this video. And then the second line, do port 8080. This is where we're gonna run this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this, but I can't show you because then my API key will be lost. So far, so good. 
On to the next. So now that we set that all up, make sure you're still in computer use demo. This is very important. If it doesn't say that, you're in the wrong area, you're lost. Do you need directions? <laughs> From here, we're gonna simply paste in Docker build T Claude computer use demo. All this is doing is creating an image, which we'll then be able to use in our VM. So we're gonna hit enter here, and this is going to take a while if this is your first time. For me, I think it took around maybe three minutes when creating this image originally. Don't worry about all that, you're not getting hacked. When I first created this, it took like three, five minutes. But now since I've already done it, it only takes like 10 seconds. This next terminal line is what's gonna actually allow us to run the container within our Docker here. Now don't worry, it looks a little crazy. You can always copy and paste from the description down below, but this is it right here. So we're going to load in our EMV file. We're going to load in the demo. We're going to load in the ports that we're going to be associating with this local demo here. We're going to enter and boom, it shows up right here. If you want to verify you did all the steps that you just saw there correctly, all you need to do is do Docker PS and then the output should look like this. If it doesn't, something might've messed up. But regardless, if you see it right here, you're probably good. Okay. We set it up in our VM so we don't destroy our computer beta. Let's check it out. Show all three ports. Go to 8080-8080. No, I'm not a robot. Click it. This is going to open up a new tab. We are loading in. We have connected. So this is super cool, y'all. So we are officially in our VM right now. And we need to do a couple things. First thing we're going to do is that sometimes it'll ask again for us to provide an API key here. So we're going to go ahead and open this right here. And obviously, this is going to be in control of your computer, but in a VM. So it's not going to be able to access files that are like on your desktop. So don't worry, uh, this can only access stuff that's found within the VM right here, which is like, like Windows like 2009, I don't know. We'll go ahead and open this sidebar here and put in that API key we had earlier. Once it's pasted, hit enter, and we are good to go, y'all. We officially have our chat. So we can do anything here. Anything, Corbin, anything. So let's try this out. First use case, let's just see how this interacts. And just as one other side note here, toggle screen control on and off. What that means is that if it's on, I can't do anything, or sorry, if it's on, I can do stuff, but if it's off, then if I'm clicking around here, I can't do anything. So I guess just to prove to you that I'm not doing anything when this demo is happening, I'll click around a little bit. But watch this. We are officially using computer use API in a VM. I've shrinked down. Here's our prompt. Let's AI control a computer. Download a cute photo of a cat. Enter. So what's going to happen is we're going to get what it's thinking, what it's doing here. Oh, and then the actual, sorry, I said, oh, because it makes a little pop noise. That you can't hear it turned off on purpose but then all of the stuff that it's doing like actually on your computer shows up here this is cool stuff so <laughs> this is the future and we're getting to the point now y'all where yeah this is very simple use case in the sense of downloading a photo of a cat but whoa 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 could you imagine what we could do in the future in the sense of just leaving your computer on and then ai does a very complex task next level stuff so let's check it out so right now it's on cute cat pictures and we can see what it's thinking of over here so the way it's kind of navigating is it'll take a photo right here and then like kind of search a new tab here okay so it's, it basically keeps running into an issue where maybe it can't find a very specific image that's available for download <laughs> this is so cool y'all so we're having an issue right now where it's trying to find an image that's downloadable so Let's guide it a little bit. I'm gonna turn screen on so I can just close off this browser. We're gonna start from ground zero again. We may need to guide it a little bit more. I mean, this is all early days. So I'm gonna try this. Download a cute image of a cat from Google Images. Just right click and save. Let's see if this helps. Help me out. I need a picture of a cat. I'm gonna turn off screen control. Here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, all right, so it's going to Google Images, y'all. Oh, this is so cool. This is actually so cool. This is it's about to be crazy, y'all. All right, go ahead and search something. I need a cat. Come on. Let's go, Claude. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. Okay, come on. Oh, this is so cool, y'all. I'm, I'm doing nothing. My hands are here. I'm doing nothing. Oh, this is awesome. Come on. Can you do it? Can you do it for me? Don't visit the site. Oh, you visited the site. Oh no, let's see if we can track back here. As I said before, this is all beta, so you're not gonna see like the most perfect showcasing. Like this is all beta, but this is, is so cool. Whoa. Okay, come on. You almost have it. I might need to do some route where I just do a screenshot. Oh, this is going at it, y'all. When it runs into walls, like paywalls, it's like, nah, I'm gonna find you something else. Don't worry. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna let this keep going, y'all. I'm gonna see if it can actually do this. Okay, so it's getting smarter. I think I may have needed to include in the prompt free image of QCAT because a lot of stuff's paywalled. Okay, royalty free images. We're getting somewhere, y'all. Come on, Claude. You got it. You're a couple of clicks away. Okay, 
Don't paywall me. Just hit download. <laughs> hit the big button that says download. Oh, okay. Is there going to be a pop-up here or is it actually going to get this? Is it going to get it? Come on, y'all. Let me know in the comments if you think it's going to get it. Come on. Hit download. Oh, well, yes, we got it. We got it. We got it. I thought we got paid walled. Okay, this is, ooh. All right, this is the future, y'all. Let me stop this. Please, AI, stop. This is the future, and this is no joke, so we're going to turn it back on. Wow. That is so cool. All right, y'all, we actually got it. If you go right here, make them to these little, the little hamburger, go to downloads. We have our cat. There it is, y'all. We officially let AI download a picture of a cat. Okay, now the real test. Let's see if this can fill out that form. All right, so this is like really, I'm really interested here, y'all. I have no clue on the, like the top level of this. Okay, we got the dog form, y'all. Oh, this is so cool. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this. So we got our form here. Dog breed, how many dogs in the image? Does this dog seem happy? I wanted to ask an open-ended question and just see what the heck it's gonna come up with. Then we have the ability to upload the file there. I went ahead and said, okay, please fill out this form with the requested inputs of a dog breed, amount of dogs in the image, and if the dog seems happy, then upload the dog image and hit submit. Gave the form URL. It seems like the, the way you prompt computer use API is a little different. You have to be very more specific because it's like actually doing actions within your computer, which is super cool. Enter. I have no clue this is going to work, y'all. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So there does seem to be actual limitations within the API itself. I think for security reasons, it doesn't allow to submit forms yet. But let's see if we can fill out the form at least. And then all we have to do is hit submit. Okay, please just fill out the form then. Also, I realized I didn't ask it to get a dog image. So we'll see if it's smart enough to know that. Okay, so it does seem like there's heavy restrictions around computer use, which makes sense. I think they're trying to mitigate bots and bot spamming. So if someone used this API to like actually fill out forms, you know, hit the little thing that says like, are you a human? That kind of thing. Let's see if we can actually just provide the data then, then I can paste over, hit enter. It really doesn't want to give me this. It actually goes as far as like gatekeeping it by saying, oh, you're just using this for the form. Let's try a new chat. Let's go ahead and try again. I'm gonna try a different strategy here. So if you wanna reset that chat, I'm gonna go ahead and just say stop selected items here. And then I'm just gonna hit run again. Once it's stopped, let's hit that little play button again and get going. So I was running into issues with restarting it. So I'm gonna make sure I leave these terminal commands below. Y'all gotta understand this is all beta. What this is gonna do is this is gonna remove the container so we can kind of reinitialize it. Docker stop Claude, Docker RM Claude, hit enter. Once you do that, I already did it. It's gonna remove that container. And then you're gonna run that other command I showed earlier, hit run again. Here we go, 80808 with my API key re-added here. I'm gonna try a new strategy. We got a little options here. So let's ask it to put all these options and answers in a text edit. I want you to download an image of a free dog then answer these questions in a text file. What's the dog breed? How many dogs are in the photo? And does the dog seem happy? Hit enter. We are live again. Firefox is open. I do wonder long-term how they're gonna get around users leveraging this in the context of filling out forms that may be spammy, right? There must be a lot of security set up right now for that. Okay, we got some happy looking dogs. I think this is the site with a paywall though. So it's gonna have to try to find an alternative solution here. Unless it's smart enough to right click now, slash screenshot. Interesting, also we can see the, the type of actions it's taking in the sense of like what it's doing, mouse move, right click. Oh, the issue is that it keeps clicking the sponsored images and those aren't the free ones. That's why it keeps getting stuck in this little loop here. It is cool though, that you can just let it keep running and it just keeps trying. Like it doesn't give up, which is really nice. And part of this probably has to do with the fact that you need to have better prompts when asking these kind of questions. So like when it has context like this, I can go to stop it and I'm gonna just be like, no, 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 let's go to Google images. I'm gonna try, just go to Google image to get the dog image. Don't try to download sponsored images. Let's see what's up. I don't know if I should have added that sponsored images part. It might get really confused, but we'll see. First off, let's see if it even listens to me for Google images. Okay, it listens to me. <laughs> Go and search it. You know what? Oh, yeah. Here we go. So the prompt is key, y'all. The prompt is key. Oh. Okay. Although I don't know if it's saving the dog photo. Oh, this is hilarious. <laughs> I don't know if that was the dog photo. I think it might have messed up. <laughs> oh, look at that. It didn't even need to show me like it uh, typing out stuff. Okay, so it created the dog analysis text file as well. All right, let's check this out. I'm actually curious what it's gonna do though because I think that's a blank photo. Let's see. All right, so let's come up here. Let's go to downloads. Is this good? It was actually good. It did download the dog photo. Let's see the text. There we go. Here's a text file. And then nice little error because it's in beta. Let me hit stop here. <laughs> let's see what's up here, y'all. All right, so we got the breed, border collie mix, number of dogs, one. Happiness level, very happy. Dog appears to be running joyfully through a field of yellow flowers with an open smile expression typical of happy dogs. 
<laughs> All right, solid. And then this was the original image that I grabbed here. I think we can confirm. Therefore, now we can fill out this form like it's nothing. Paste over border collie. It was one and we got the confirmation. I was very happy. Download the image, uploaded and hit submit. We have successfully submitted a form with the help of AI. Once you're done, make sure to pause it and you're gonna go, you can run AI on your computer now. So that example shows us automating stuff locally on our computer, which is super cool. But as you probably already know, we can automate basically anything we want with Zapier when it comes to software. These little automations that you can set up, leave and let them go in. Really cool stuff like automatic email replying with AI, automatic data input with AI when it comes to spreadsheets, etc. That concludes today's video. All relevant commands, directions, and all the resources can be found in the description down below. Make sure you leave a like. It's completely free, and I'll see you in the next video. AI controls our computer. Download a cat. Download a dog. Those are two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.